how things gone other than the usual podcast? Um, basically, same old, same old. I'm stuck in here. Um, you doing your martial arts still? In the shit? Uh, personally, in my own garage. Um, so it's mostly just me doing uh, exercises here and there. And last night, me and my roommate, we'd both do Kempo. Mm-hmm. We've just kind of been practicing together. listening to alternating sloth podcast episode 11 uh i have special guest eric on again eric what hello, are you? hello hello Say hello yeah how are you doing eric uh doing pretty well keeping my um myself busy as much as i can considering i'm pretty much stuck in my house but hey i got plenty of things here to entertain me and this is one of them so it is great to come back on again connor thank you very much for that so just for our international listeners with the uh, coronavirus going on um, New Zealand is in a different type of lockdown we're in lockdown four which means we just have to stay home we can't go out um, not but you could go for walks and go to the supermarket but that's about it only the essentials at the moment so yeah that's that's what's happening at the moment so me and Eric have both been stuck at home and we're gonna both be stuck at home for four weeks uh, not working so we're gonna try and provide some uh, well I'm gonna try and provide some podcasts and maybe get Eric on occasionally so yeah so a lot of it's gonna be a lot of fun <laughs> and it's gonna be something to keep us you know entertained and sl- stop us from slowly going insane yeah Eric, what did I get you to read and... Well, what did I get you to watch? Let's, let's start with that. What did you watch this week? Well, you today I've mainly just um, watched the first episode of a series called Blue Gender. Yep. So it's uh, another series, uh, I guess, I don't know, post-apocalyptic or futuristic mm-hmm. type um, series, where apparently the world... Um, where apparently the world has been overtaken by giant, creepy, mutated bugs called Blue. Um, where the na- well, the name makes them sound a little cute, but they're anything but. <laughs> it's uh, I actually like that. I actually looking. like that. Uh, yeah, very much. Um, <laughs> it was a little awkward to watch some of these bugs, especially with um, their mouths opening up and looking like certain anomalies. Anomalies, yeah. Um, but I mean, overall, it's a good, good first episode, um, especially with an old um, anime like this. What was it? Is it? It's a it 1999, so it's not 1999. that old. 1999. Yeah. No, not that old, but still looks pretty good. But it, um, yeah. so yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, and really, yeah, just a uh, yeah, really nice first episode. And what I've been managing to read through was I believe the first five or six chapters of let me just bring up the name because I well, can't uh, remember we'll, we'll get to that in a minute let's let's stick, yeah, yeah. let's stick on blue gender so so yeah I made Eric watch the first episode of blue gender and um, the reason I made Eric do this was because of the fact that uh, you have not seen that many old titles now have you Eric just mostly the popular ones, um, popular movies or popular series, really, um, from the 90s. But anything like Blue Gender, which I've never heard of, is definitely new to me. Mm. Yeah, I noticed you. There's there's a couple shows that I really like that you just probably haven't heard of or haven't seen. Um, I think I've showed you a couple episodes of Roni Kenshin, things like that, but... Yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure I've watched Rio and Kenshin when I was younger, um, but I think, I think again, that was with you showing me back yeah. when you first became a fan of it, yeah. um, which I did like and enjoyed. Yeah, and have you seen and... Yu Yu Hakusho, or is that one that's probably... Oh, yeah, I've seen Yu Yu Hakusho, okay. yeah, uh, but just the first few episodes, I don't know, it didn't really capture my interest that mm-hmm. much, but mm-hmm. I guess I just kind of had to keep pushing myself forward but before I start to enjoy I know for you, 
and and this is the same for another friend of ours uh you guys haven't seen that many older stuff and you haven't seen that many much mecha stuff from what i can grasp maybe maybe some newer stuff <laughs> like code gears but the extension um, of my favorite mecha um, anime, and I'm not sure whether or not it's uh, still applicable here, would be Neon Genesis Evangelion. That counts. That counts. Okay, that counts. Then. I thought yeah, you were going to say Metabots. Or... <laughs> Metabots. Oh, no. I'm not even sure if I even counted Metabots in my um, favorites. It's, a, it's technically um, a, a robot. I don't know if it counts as a mecha show, but it's a robot show, mm -hmm. technically. I wouldn't count. I, wouldn't, I personally wouldn't um, count. And if you've mecha. seen Zoids, that counts as a mecha show. Yes, yes, Zoids, Zoids, that was now, epic. Now, did you see the first season of Zoids back in the day? The Not the one where it's got Bit Cloud and he's got the, um, what is it? he's got the parts and stuff, and it's basically a, a different fight each week. You know the one where it's the blue Zoid? The, like, yep, blue yep. tiger thing. Yeah, I remember that. That was great. Yeah. Um, not the, not very many memorable episodes mm -hmm. from it, but I think the only memorable one was the introduction of their massive, I don't know, Titan-sized Zoid, mm -hmm. which was used as a storage unit for other Zoids. Mm -hmm. So basically, it was like a transport carrier. I think you're... And... Oh, I know that. Yeah, I was going to say, I think you're mixing up the series, but I remember they're in both. They have those things in yeah. both of them. Um, yeah, pretty much. Because I, 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 got, I got Zoids vibes uh, watching this show, and especially if you get on, I know it doesn't seem like it, but once you get on to episodes two and three and stuff later on, mm. uh, you get more of that desert sort of setting, them going around in trucks and carrying mechas on yeah. the back and stuff. Kind of like Zoids, um, mm -hmm. and they even run into some gypsies, which is also in Zoids as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, because it definitely, it definitely did give that vibe so far. Um, especially with oh, sorry, the no, sorry, nomads, not gypsies. Nomads, okay. Yeah. Um, this did especially give that first vibe, and I did like the um, structure of their first of the mech of the second mech we saw, where it was two guys loaded onto one mech, mm. and they just kind of. I don't know, collaborating with one another to pilot that thing. Not sure whether or not it's because this is more it was a more technical mech or because, well, someone needed to help the other guy because one of those guys was a little cuckoo. Um, <laughs> but in any case that actually looks that still look really awesome, especially since the mech literally punched a bug to death um, where it stood. So that was already you a you're gonna good... watch watch any more of the show? Probably. Um, it is pretty much a break from the watching the more recent stuff. Mm -hmm. um, can't remember some of it. There's a few things I wanted to watch, but haven't managed to get around to it. Um, honest to God, I haven't managed to um, <laughs> finish watching some of the stuff I wanted to finish watching. So, yeah, I'll actually try to get around to watching more of the, these um, episodes. It actually looks really good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and I wanted to talk about, about the music. Uh, I've got to say, the opening and the ending, I like the show, but the opening and ending is shit. Uh, but the background music, I think, is really good. Like, it oh, sets definitely. the mood, and it's, it's just... It's very... It's, um, I, it is, if you've seen a couple 90s shows, it is kind of the time period-like. But thankfully, mm. unlike a lot of 90s and 80s movies, it doesn't have an annoying saxophone in the background. <laughs> because it is very know, synth, I thought, I thought sort of heavy the music saxophones. it is it thought, is sort of on a synth sizer yeah. sort of thing but it's but it's good music oh it's definitely good um i don't know i didn't mind the opening um it actually sounded you know uh for it's for for the time that it was it sounded like pretty it sounded pretty good yeah there, and the better. ending was it's better and and, and yeah. it kind of for me especially when you watch the show it's you probably noticed it's got a bit of a horror vibe and um it goes more with that and then sort of becomes something else later on um yeah definitely definitely the first episode did set that horror vibe um pretty well yep. especially since um what is it it's a giant it's giant bugs taking over mutant bugs taking over the planet and essentially just killing everybody and what did the first episode show us um the bugs spitting out and then molding two human bodies together for a meal that looked pretty um you know disgusting which is although i'm a little surprised by how um it looked because usually with horror animes like that, they don't exactly go 
especially ones in the 90s, they never really held back on the visuals. Mm -hmm. But the visual looked a bit tame by comparison to some, especially to, what is it? Um, Especially, especially, I guess, to... As I mentioned earlier, Neon Genesis Evangelion, which did have a few horror scenes in it from time well, to time. But it's more of a psychological a... Yeah. sort of drama, mecha psychological mm. drama. Um, and that that's that's actually heavily influenced by some Go Nagai stuff, which yeah was a bit of horror. Like it's got a it's got a big Devil Man influence. Um, in mm. Neon Genesis. This this maybe a little bit with some of the. Um, sexual imagery with the monsters but i think that's more of an aliens thing it definitely gave Mm. me more of an aliens vibe and this also um is heavily influenced by a movie called star uh starship starship troopers if you've seen that uh only ever watched the first movie never got around to watching the rest yeah so as you Um, probably know that movie is very much about uh young teens sort of military going after these bug monster things uh, it was a bit funny when I first watched it, but I was a little kid then. Mm-hmm. And then growing up, it was still a little bit funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're right, Blue Gender does um, does have a bit of psychological horror in it. Yeah. And it does show with the um, main character, who does immediately come out as a scared, as a scared, um, I guess a scaredy cat. But then again, the last thing he saw was himself being sealed up you know, uh, to be cured in the future because of an unknown disease. And he doesn't and know what wake... the fuck's going on. He just woke up yeah. and there's suddenly giant bug monsters. I think you'd have the same reaction too. Yeah, I'd be thinking, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> what is going on? Yeah, it's, um, I think, I think I really like that part, you know, regardless of the fact that, um, you know, you would think to yourself, oh, look, he's so scared. The thing, the thing is, they did pretty well. Uh, they did the reaction pretty well. You know, when you first wake up, you wouldn't go, "Oh, great, I'm ready to, f- I'm ready to fight, ready to rescue people." You're like, "Holy, what is going well, on?" When you I get up, out of here, uh, er, er, so Eric, well, we both know this. You over, if you ever oversleep, do you ever feel like you could get up and go run around and, you know? Oh, I've done that once. Um, I mean, I mean, if you oversleep, like you sleep a long time, not 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 getting a full night's sleep. I mean, oversleep because I feel more tired after I've like slept too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's happened to me plenty of times. So um, I can imagine I do... if you're sleeping for thousands of centuries, I don't imagine you waking up going, "Wow, I feel refreshed." <laughs> no, no, and we've seen the um, you know. Uh, different series where that's happened, um, all these beings sleeping for who knows how long, and then waking up going, uh, what is going on? Yeah. Uh. And also, when you sleep that long, you got no food, you've got no, like, the, the, one, the, the one thing that would happen with this guy that they won't do because it would be kind of silly, he would have trouble moving his legs because <laughs> your legs would fall asleep, or you'd have trouble with your legs after being, yeah. you know, in the coma then- state stay for that long yeah that's well, that is i guess they had a way of um kind of rectifying that issue considering he managed to you know within the span of five ten minutes getting up getting up and running as mm. soon as he got up but i don't know maybe some people will um will think that's because of the adrenaline well, running I, I can him. tell you i've been on a 10-hour flight and just sitting mm. for 10 hours my legs fall asleep if i don't get up you know even even oh, after five sweet. hours, my legs fall asleep. So, <laughs> centuries, his oh, legs would be, oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, he definitely wouldn't survive on long flights. <laughs> uh, I somehow managed to keep myself awake. Well, for I, I, I get up and move every now and then. But, I mean, if I, mm. if I just sit for five hours, my legs are bloody out of it. I, I can mm. imagine if I slept for, like, a century, bloody hell, my legs would be, you know... <laughs> No, no that's for me. crazy. It definitely, it definitely wouldn't work out well for you. But yeah, I mean, yeah. So yeah, it definitely. Here's a question: Did you watch this in, in dub or sub? Dub. You watched it dubbed. I watched oh. it subbed. Oh, you watched it. Su- I didn't hear. You, I, I thought you said dub. I watched and, uh, this. Ha- no, I watched the sub. I don't like. I don't actually like the dub that much for this. Honestly, I haven't found a good um server for dubbed um i've been trying to but every time i did the video just failed to load so 
I'm assuming I'm assuming even the internet knows the dub might not be a good idea. Oh, uh, no, no, no. It's not that. <laughs> it's possible, but it, it, it's a very early Funimation dub. Um, mm. and oh. it's okay. Oh. Laura <laughs> Bailey is probably the best part of it. She's uh, Ooh, the main okay. female lead. She's Meryl. Um, but I think Eric Vale's the main dude, and he's just not really a good fit. And some of the other people mm. just aren't. As, and you can tell they have less people, so they have to overuse people, or they have to cast people that maybe don't suit the role, but uh, you know they they just have to. Um, but the the Japanese side of things, I noticed, was pretty good. Mm. No, no, the um, the Japanese, yeah, it was all it was all still pretty good. I didn't have a chance to look up on who was. Um, I, I had I had a look up. This is this is what I've got on my information here. So the main the main guy is uh, Kenji Nojima. He's been in like nothing we've seen. <laughs> like he's he I don't know if his career just went bad after this or he just didn't really. I think this is his only lead from what I saw when I was looking up. So oh wow yeah, and he he, he doesn't do bad in the series. But um the main chick who is Meryl in this uh she her name is uh, Hoko Kawashima and. Um, that name might sound familiar to you because she's also mm -hmm. the voice of Claire from Claymore. Ah, yep, there we go. I knew it <laughs> sounded familiar. <laughs> and also the voice of Soifon and Bleach. Soifon and Bleach? Oh, wow. Yeah. I did not know that. Although yeah. I've only ever watched Bleach so, and dubbed, so... Yeah. And if you if you <laughs> think, oh, she can only play tough and gruff sort of characters, she's also uh, Kasumi in DOA, the fighting game. Seriously? Yeah, which is a really high voice, so... Which which one is the first, uh, second, the third one? Ones. The recent huh? ones, I think after. Oh, three. number six. So all number the ones six. you've played, basically. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, that's really awesome. Um, yeah, didn't actually know that she did a. I should. I think she did pretty well for this. Um, you. Although to be to be fair, uh, we didn't. I didn't really get enough lines out of yeah. her in the first episode well, to make her. Well, with this, you, Meryl is call. kind of like Claire, where it's a character that's kind of um, cold yeah. and very militant. And then mm -hmm. later on, she opens up and we get to see more of her personality. And you get to see a bit more of the acting through that. Um, mm. And it, this show gets... Uh, well, it does kind of get, um, it gets kind of very, it gets some nihilistic vibes and a bit dark later on. Um, but it generally, there's some, there's some happy moments and there's some sad moments. And um, it's got a very heavy theme of uh, birth and, well, rebirth is a huge theme in this show. Uh, if you watch it all the way till the end, you'll, you'll get exactly what I mean by rebirth. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds pretty deep for a show we've never heard of. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, but no, that's actually yeah. that actually sounds really good. Um, definitely have to give that more of a watch. I then. would I would recommend as well if people like this, check out um, "All You Need Is Kill." That's a really good, uh, or you might know as, as "Edge of Tomorrow," the Tom Cruise movie. Oh uh, the live action yes, one. it's a good live action. Mm. I've been yeah. meaning to actually read the what is it the the manga, manga um, yeah. "Edge of," you know, uh, based off of that. Yeah, it's called but... "All You Need Is Kill." And, yeah, all you um, need is kill. Yeah, it's not bad. So that's why I couldn't really find it. But if, if oh, well. you like Blue Gender, it's that, that's a good one um, to check out. Mm. And um, the show has oh no, I won't spoil that. You'll you'll get up to it. It's got some parts in it that you've probably seen before. Like there's there's some some things in it. But uh, yeah, that that's what we that's what we watched this week. First episode, uh, first episode watch. And and was there anything you didn't enjoy, Eric, in the first episode? I I was okay with it the whole time. Um, since it was the first episode, I I don't really I don't really try and judge the whole sh entirety of the show too much based on based on just the first episode. But I think the whole opening of it was pretty good, and even the even the am animation was actually way smoother than most of the 90s shows um so it looked like a it looked like it was having that special transition from really rough really rough really um uh really rough movement to just much much smoother mm. so that's something i really enjoyed watching in parts especially with the characters simply turning their face <laughs> it was instead of instead of it kind of going 
I guess the best way to describe it, instead of it kind of going... And you're on an you know, audio podcast, so describe it yeah. in terms that... Yeah, I'm be. trying to... I'll try to describe it. Instead of it kind of going, you know, um, a just simply A to B in one movement, it goes A, B, C, D, E, F. So it kind of has old... It kind of just follows that curve instead of just going... Uh, one point to another, so that was actually really, really nice to see. Um, although I guess for a, even though it was um, a '90s anime, it was in the late '90s, so something like that. Late would have '90s been... into the 2000s. It's a little yeah. bit rough in some places. Yeah, um, but and it, the look but and it, it, it is the first yeah. use I think of a lot of digital sort of animation coming out. Mm. Then, so yeah, it's going out of the hand-drawn stuff a little bit. So looks a little rough in some places. But I mean, you still you still get to see the um, transition, that that kind of transition from what is it from that from as you said the rough hand drawn manga to the much smoother animation, which is something I really loved seeing because yeah, it just kind of showed a more yeah, it just it just made everything look so much smoother, mm. or I guess a little bit smoother, which is one of the things one of the things I mostly enjoyed about it. Yeah, I did want to. I did want to really talk about the show because it doesn't get talked about much, and uh, I've seen some people sort of shit on it. Some people, because it's it's not one of the big ones that everybody likes. And I, I like I like some of the Gundams and some of the, the I, I like Macross, um, but I'm not I'm not huge on Mecha all the time. But I do really like this show, and I think it's a it's a really underrated show. So. That was the main reason why I recommend it to you, and um, also as I said, you don't watch enough older stuff, so I thought give you a little I bit really of a classic. <laughs> as I as I said, most of my the enjoyable, the extent to which I enjoy old stuff kind of rounds up to Neon Genesis, Neon, Neon Genesis yeah. Evangelion which as is about a series. Ninety five, ninety six, somewhere around there. Yeah. So still pretty, still pretty yeah. good, but obviously not exactly what you'd call extensive. Um, uh, extensive oh, watching. I'll have to give you an anime. '80s or '70s thing next. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love that. So, so overall, what were your thoughts, Eric, on this first episode? Yeah, it's pretty. It's really good, and I'll definitely, I'll definitely keep watching it. One advice I've been told when watching new anime is the three episode rule. Mm -hmm. If you don't enjoy it in the first three episodes, um, <laughs> yeah, you drop it. You know, it's your own little review. Some. Yeah, I've heard of quite a few people. I've known quite a few people watch the first episode and just drop it. Yeah, so I, I do think... three episodes, but I figured yeah. we do these one episode reviews just because it's easy, mm -hmm. quick. Maybe we'll do a three episode review at some point. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's a good way. It'll be a good way to um, you know check and see what what we can, what kind of enjoyment that we can get out of from watching. Either just one episode or the first three episodes. Well, some shows also the pacing. They've got they'll put they'll introduce all the characters in episode one, then episode mm. two they introduce some more of the setting maybe. Then episode three they're finally into the story. So yeah, sometimes you know you got to do three episodes. Yeah, so there's definitely so there's definitely some things you kind of miss out only watching the first episode in comparison to watching the first three. Okay, that was our uh, episode. Uh, our one episode review of Blue Gender. We'll be back after the break. All right, we are back after the break. Uh, we're going to do the manga review. Uh, are you still there, Eric? I'm still here. Cool. All Alive right. Live and well. <laughs> So, let's get into it. What did I get you to read this week, Eric? Well, you got me to read Sabu to Ichi Torimono Hikai. <laughs> I do not remember what the English name for it is, yep. but what it looks like is an extremely old um, manga. Yeah, I was going to um, recommend you the anime at first, but I thought, no, 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 I'll, I'll give you the manga. <laughs> mm, uh, that was a good that was a good choice because the manga looks good. Um, hand the the characters are look a little, yeah, they're all hand drawn and they look really simplistic. But I mean, the background just looks amazing. Um, just looking looking at the 
just looked at one of the previous ones. And basically, one of the previous chapters was um, uh, the setting was basically a rainy day. And unlike some of the regular rainy day looking um, uh, pictures, this one kind of kind of kind of imagine a what is it east east asian um style mixed in with uh what is it uh vincent that one of vincent van gogh's paintings especially starry night that that looked brilliant i really love that um but in terms of kind of reading through the manga i really enjoyed it it looks to be it looks to be a i guess i guess a old Oh, I wouldn't even know. It's a samurai. It's a samurai. Yeah. a chum, chumbara yeah. sort of thing. Pretty much a yeah, pretty much a samurai era um, uh, manga story, but yeah, all what, about. What's the premise, Eric? Essentially, essentially, it's a detective types a type um, story, mm-hmm. and each chapter brings in a new case and a new individual story, um, but not all of them are immediately. Uh, immediately seen as oh somebody's dead let's get the police in um because the main character doesn't appear to be part of the police he's his um a- occupation is apparently a thief taker which from what i can see is kind of like a freelancer mm-hmm. um and he's employed by the local the local police to actually help out in cases mm. and so he's got a partner Bank- as well who's his partner his partner is a, a masseur, so that's a male a massage therapist, mm-hmm. who's uh, a blind guy, mm-hmm. but also who's a swords master. Mm. So I guess that's one aspect of the manga that's kind of, um, you know, out of the out of the norm. Mm. Um, you don't often see blind masters in these types of things, especially with how realistic it is. But so far, it's enjoyable. Um, only read the first five chapters, mm-hmm. but it's really, really nice. And the artwork, as I said before, when it comes to mm-hmm. everything else, but the character looks fantastic. The shading, the shapes, um, the whole scene, the whole scenery, it looks beautiful. And the characters themselves, the way they're drawn, it's really simplistic. Um, it's really 60s. Have you, have you read anything from the 60s? Any manga from the 60s? Mm, nothing really comes to mind, so I guess not that many um, <laughs> that I could remember. Yeah. But is this from the sixties? Yeah. No, oh, damn. Sixties. Um. Yeah, definitely, is, definitely nothing. Yeah, nothing. this is the oldest thing I've seen outside because I've seen the anime of this, and this is the oldest thing I have seen outside of the um, obviously the first anime stuff you can watch on YouTube, mm, which is from this the twenties or whatever. Oh my god, this is def. Then this is definitely really good, um, and yeah, really enjoyable. Um, but yeah, it's it's it is really nice. I guess my I guess my own personal I guess my own personal uh, gripe about this is the details of each character, since the main characters, um, the thief taker and the masseur, and even the I guess the girl who looks after the masseur. They are really they, the detail on them is pretty good. Mm. Everyone else just kind of looks like misshapen <laughs> uh, potatoes, basically. Would Would you check out the anime of this or the live action TV show? Um, I would definitely check out the anime of this first, just to see how close it is to the um to the artwork. I haven't I didn't actually know there was an anime. As yeah. for the live action, well, no, I would still also look at the live action i don't look at that many live action um shows of manga or anime yeah um actually i haven't seen any except for the first episode of death note mm-hmm. and that was something i don't even remember <laughs> about <laughs> so um, for, for sorry to interrupt you um so for this week i was trying to as I said before in the in the anime review, um, I wanted to give Eric some older stuff to check out because uh, even though Eric is actually older than me, he hasn't checked out that much older uh, anime or manga. So I wanted to recommend some some stuff to him. Uh, I went a little bit newer with with the anime. I did almost think of giving you an anime. I was going to give you that 
uh, anime from the 60s almost. Um, mm. But then I went with Blue Gender because I don't think enough people talk about it. And I was almost going to recommend you uh, a manga called A Drifting Classroom, which is a really good one too. Um, but that manga is about people being stranded in a classroom. And I thought with our current situation, uh, giving you a post-apocalypse uh, mecha anime and a manga about people being trapped, I thought both of those are a little bit too much uh, scary isolation to what we're, where we are at the moment. So I want to give you a fun samurai thing to read instead. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind it either way, considering I just looked it up. It looks, I don't know, from it's, first... It's also a very old manga as well. Okay. From the looks of it, it kind of... I don't know, let me look at the quick description of it. It kind of looks almost like a corpse party... Um, sti- corpse party style, but I'm corpse assuming party. it's because it's not that. No, um, you, you definitely got the wrong thing. It's more close to something like Barefoot Gen, if you read that, in terms of oh, art style. Oh, Barefoot Gen. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, well, this is another thing for me to have a look at. <laughs> so, yeah, I do thank you for that. It, it got um, an award um, for, I think, one of the best mangas or something for its year or something like that. So, that was mm-hmm. something I thought about. Um, maybe we'll talk about it next time. Uh, we'll do a would. review of it uh, but mm. this well, I wanted to give you some information on this manga uh, I did I did a little bit of so this is written by um, Shotaro Ishinomori are you familiar with that name Eric? that sounds familiar yeah so um, that guy is responsible for uh, Carmen Rider and some of the sort of um, stuff that's to do with Power Rangers sort of stuff <laughs> Super Sentai sort of stuff uh, he wrote manga that had a lot of influence on that stuff and also wrote episodes on, on Kamen Rider and things like that and did character designs and that's what he's most well known for. Oh, that sounds really cool. Mm. Although I'm not exactly, personal, I'm not personally a fan of Kamen Rider. Um, ne- neither am I, but I, that, yeah. that's his biggest thing and probably the second big, you, you mentioned the simple um, character designs before. Well, yeah. Uh, I know you've read some Osamu Tezuka, I know you've read some Black... I don't know if you've read Blackjack, but I know you've read some, some Tezuka stuff. I've um, read a bit of Blackjack, definitely. Yeah, so this guy worked under Osamu Tezuka. This guy was one of his assistants, and so obviously his art style is a little bit influenced by uh, Tezuka's. Yeah. yeah. Very simple, sort of um, Disney-influenced art style. Um it's also, there's a character, you mentioned that blind character. Do you know his mm-hmm. name, Eric? Uh, it was Ichi. Okay, so Ichi, there are two major influences for that character. Um, one is Zato Ichi, the blind swordsman from the, mm-hmm. those movies. There's a whole series of them. Um, oh, that's starting right. from the 60s, or 50s, actually. So uh, that, and he was a masseuse, I believe, as well, um, sometimes. So blind masseuse swordsman definitely an influence on ichi um you know you've even got the name zato ichi so i wouldn't be surprised if he just took the ichi part (laughs) uh also there is a character in um there was a new so there was a new adaption of osamu tezuka's manga uh dororo and um (laughs) in that there is a blind monk swordsman character who looks a little bit like ichi so I wouldn't be surprised if either that was mm. influenced by um, the manga you just read, or if Tezu- if he took from Tezuka, you know. Yeah, yeah, I can kind of see that. Um, although I have watched a bit of the an- new new anime adaptation of Dororo, mm. but I haven't. I don't remember the blind monk. You don't remember him? He's got a bit of a misshapen head, and he's blind. He's got a mm. noticeable blind eye, and he kind of looks like Ichi from from. Sabuto Ichi. I'll have to look back on it, but I don't really remember it that well. Mm. But, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of amazed at the influence that it runs, but, mm. um, yeah, but the Blind Swordsman part, that was, the, that was funny. Mm. Especially since, yeah, I don't know how many, um, shows or manga I've seen that have, um, Blind Swordsman. Mm-hmm. But this one, but this one, Ichi, I really like so far. Um, I think they've built his character up really well, despite 
only reading five chapters, by the way. Mm. Um, we've seen how he helps the main character. We've seen how he's got his own um, uh, business that he runs and how he uses that to help the main character. And we've seen how he's kind of gone through a turmoil um, with someone he's trusted before and realized that person has you know, been a bad guy in the past and that's continued on. Mm. Um, so, so far, my my current experience with the Blind Swordsman, um, Itchy, uh, is already good and he's already coming out to be my favorite character. Um, whereas the other main character of this manga is, I don't know, he's kind of there, really. Um, it's not much. So, so your biggest character con would be so he's kind of a... The, the second main lead is kind of bland, not really interesting. Uh, I'd say I'd say the first main lead, Sabu, that's the mm. thief taker. Mm. He is definitely the main character. But in terms of character, um, characterization, I guess, yeah, characterization in comparison to Ichi, that's mm, I don't know. There's not much to really talk about. Mm. Um, Ichi's got a good build up. He doesn't. Maybe it's maybe maybe it's a bit slow, or maybe it's you know. Or maybe there's there wasn't any need for it, but so far five chapters in, mm -hmm. there's not much to comment on in terms of the main character. Mm -hmm. um, but thankfully, this is about what forty chapters, mm -hmm. so who who knows? Maybe there's enough there's enough time to actually build up on the main character and actually make him as interesting or maybe more interesting than Ichi. Mm -hmm. Although it's going to be. It's going to take a lot of effort because so far five chapters in Ichi is definitely my favorite character in this series, mm. in this um, manga. I think you'll really enjoy his arc. There, there's a, I think there's mm. even an episode where he gets his sight back, and that's that's a really interesting episode. Oh, I definitely want to see that. Yeah. Um, although I'm guessing he loses it again because that's the way it works. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit of it an episodic bit manga. It doesn't really have a continuous storyline, if I remember correctly. It's just one episode after the next. Yeah, it definitely is. I think that's the and I think that's a good thing because if it kind of continues on, you kind of have to follow an individual kind of nothing much. Nothing much would kind of change. It kind of would go on to just one story um, continuously. But because um, there's multiple stories, one after the other. It does make things interesting because each situation is different mm -hmm. and each situation is a chance to build or develop the character uh, differently. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in keeping with the themes, um, I was thinking about the theme of this week and I thought we would go with uh, Mecha Samurai as the theme. So, Mecha shows and <laughs> Samurai stuff. And so, uh, mm -hmm. in keeping with the Mecha theme, I went out... And I can you see that, Eric? Yes, I can. What what am I holding in my hand, Eric? <laughs> You're holding. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, I forgot the name, but I know that. So this uh. is Inu Yashiki. So, uh, and I've bought two volumes, by the way. Here's the nice. here's the other one. I know people won't be able to see it, but these are volumes of a manga called In uh, Inu Yashiki. So, I um, right before lockdown, I headed to our uh, local comic book shop, Pulsar Max, and I bought uh, these two manga because I figured I was going to need something to read in the meantime. Um, even Good though idea. I knew it was only going to take me five minutes, I figured I'd get something to read anyways. So, yeah. <laughs> so, I've, I've read all this before, um, but I've never owned it, so I figured I would buy a copy and, and actually own it and, and have a reread of it um and i also watched i had seen the entire a little bit of the anime as well and i went back and watched some of that as well uh now what eric i, I don't know if i've mentioned this but i am a big fan of gantz eric may have may have not known that um i bought you a volume when you practically begged for it no, yeah. <laughs> um but you at least were helpful in your suggestions for your birthday presents i do i do yeah. own most of the volumes of gantz there, there's only a couple I, I i try to own lots of manga but gantz is probably the one where i've actually spent quite a bit of money trying to get all the mm -hmm. volumes even some of the ones i've already read just because i like going back and rereading it um the only other show i think that's like that for me is maybe Hollock. But um, 
but but yeah this this one is definitely one that i've tried to collect and read so i i really like uh the author oku hiroya who does um gantz the, i will admit there are some problems with gantz um but i could talk all day about the pros and cons of gantz and and i'll probably have to dedicate another whole review to just Gantz uh, because there's so much to talk about with it. But um, I thought I would talk about the author. Uh, so I've read almost everything he's done that I've been able to find. Um, the main thing with a lot of his stuff is it can be a little bit nihilistic. There's a lot of... Uh, his theme is very much about... And a lot of his manga are about um, people in Japan not necessarily always being nice um you know people being distrusting of people people not necessarily always looking out for each other uh th those are always really big big themes in his his manga um and he takes a huge influence from a lot of uh funnily enough back to the future and uh a lot of other uh western western movies and um <laughs> Definitely. I think it's Back to the Future Three, right? No, no, no. The first Back to the Future. There's even a whole uh, manga where he draws his two biggest influences, Die Hard wow. and Back to the Future. E. <laughs> I don't see much of a Die Hard influence though in Gantz or anything else he's written, but um, mm. I could definitely see some of the other the other Hollywood uh, influences like Kill Bill and. Um, the matrix and stuff you can definitely see that in, in some of his manga especially in Gantz, his longest running title um he has also done other titles that eric probably hasn't read that are a bit more um i don't want to say adult that like he's done he's done he's done romance stuff as well and i wouldn't say they're good um to be honest uh like he, he's not the best at writing his probably his biggest fault is he's pretty bad at writing female characters um but he's <laughs> really good at writing male characters like he's really good at writing a solid arc for mm -hmm. um especially for his younger characters to grow up and and become like full-fledged people with a personality with faults and and you know all that good stuff that we want to see he's really good at just mainly writing a, a male character development sadly that doesn't quite happen with his female characters um i think the most character development he's given with some of his characters is there's maybe some older female characters in some of his manga that get a bit of that um one of his mangas about a hikikomori uh, there's a little bit of character development in that, but that that can be a really uncomfortable read. Um, but yeah, th th that's sort of the stuff he's written. Um, oh, the biggest thing. So Eric may know this as well. So he he draws his stuff out, and then he digitally scans it in, and then draws it into a computer. And he generally uses 3D models and 3D modeling in his backgrounds. So he doesn't really draw backgrounds, if I remember correctly. He does a lot of 3D model type backgrounds, which makes his stuff kind of hard to adapt sometimes. Yeah, yeah. It does yeah? Yeah, I think and, I, I think I think I'd remember a bit of that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I can see. Uh, yeah, I remember a bit of that definitely. Yeah, that that's probably his biggest noticeable thing. Um, Inu Yashiki is no exception. Uh, I would say the CG and the anime does not look amazing, but it actually looks better than the Gantz anime that came out um, years ago, which is okay. Um, hey, at least the opening was pretty good, right? <laughs> everybody likes that, I think. Um, mm -hmm. It's okay. It's not terrible. Um, it amped up certain... I'd actually say the anime is less accessible than the manga in some places. Um, there is one portion in the manga that's a little bit unaccessible but um and some of the bad female character writing is still in against but but this manga here i'd say is probably his most accessible um he's definitely writing for a wider audience but funnily enough he's not targeting a wider audience um i would say it can appeal to a lot of different people but he's he's do he's done something that most manga people wouldn't do in japan which is he's made an old guy the main character which is very yeah, yeah. uncommon for, for for manga as, as eric <laughs> probably knows 
Um, well, it's it very is, common it is for, for popular anime and manga to have yeah. an older, especially a superhero type older main mm. character. Yeah, I can't really think of any at the top of my head at the moment. Yeah. Um, unless, of course, they're based, it's an isekai type um, <laughs> manga anime. Well, even then, it's, it's an older character that maybe becomes mm. a younger character or a girl or something. They never usually stick <laughs> as a 60-year-old man like this guy here um, who's yeah, yeah. in his maybe 60s, maybe in his 50s or something. He gets called out for looking older than that. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely. Which I think is kind of a joke from from Hiroya pointing out the fact that it is kind of weird to have a character this old as the main character. Um, mm-hmm. But the main premise revolves around this older guy. He's kind of uh, I don't know if you'd say midlife crisis. He's in sort of a situation. He's he's um he's kind of had a he's kind of had a down in the dumps type of situation. You know, um, he's, he's bad getting things old happening. And down yeah. trodden his back's going out and and then he gets diagnosed with stomach cancer mm, yeah that was <laughs> there's it's one of the things that kind of pile up on him other than what is i think his kids disliking him his um marriage well, they was in just, shambles they just, they're too busy they yeah. don't care um yeah you find out later on they do kind of care but they're just they're just too busy they're too involved in their own things and aren't noticing things around them um they don't have much compassion that's that's the main thing but, and this is a huge theme as i said in a lot of his his stuff um so he he goes out for a walk he's got a dog at this point now because he, he just needs something to keep him happy and, yeah, um, don't remember the dog. Yeah, it's called Hanukkah, if I remember correctly. And he's yes, and this other boy is also um, out for a walk, this young guy called Hiro, this young teenager. And uh, mm-hmm. they both walk and they both get hit by an alien ship. And the alien ship kills them. And the alien ship goes, oh shit, we've got to fix these people. And they basically uh, rebuild them as um, alien cyborgs. <laughs> and um, Yeah. Our main dude decides he's going to become a hero and, and save people and cure people. Um, and the other dude decides he's going to become a serial killer and just mm. use his powers for evil. Yeah. It was a, it was definitely a... Um, I think I've only watched maybe one episode and then read a few of the chapters as well for that series. I do a lot of that. But... Um, yeah, I guess in going with the Gantz theme, it's really detailed and really gory as well. Mm. So a lot of the fighting scenes do involve, say, the old guy basically one-upping his opponents and <laughs> essentially, essentially doing the equivalent of gouging their eyes out. There, there is, is uh, yeah. speaking of your Kempo, there is a, a chapter actually where a guy mentions, hey, do you do Kempo? And he goes, no. Nah. <laughs> I just thought that was kind of funny. Um, uh, but there is a, there is some really cool scenes in this. There's a really cool uh, yakuza takedown that I'm not going to spoil. That's just freaking awesome. Um, there's yeah. There's also um, let me just yeah. There's a yakuza takedown. There's some just really good stuff with uh, some of the character development with with Hero and seeing where he is and seeing that he's. Um, he he's kind of a monster a little bit. He he you know he's he's not that compassionate for some of the people uh, he doesn't yeah, know. Yeah, pretty much. But pretty he much really like cares psych- for the people he knows, and you really see that, which is interesting. Mm. Although, in one of the episodes, I believe him causing a you know a large number of deaths and a, quite a bit of destruction on the simple street doesn't exactly show that much compassion yeah, for him yeah. at so the he beginning. Gets, so he, he, he starts out quite corrupt and quite evil, and he just gets a little bit worse as, as we go on. But we do see oh, yeah. sides of him that could be a good person. Um, he's still got some of his humanity, but he's slowly losing some of it as well. And um, what's interesting about this as well is there are some Gantz references in it. Um, for some people, that's a bit of a fault. Like, there's giant Gantz posters in one of the guys' rooms. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Ty, one of the main char- uh, one of the main character's girlfriends, and Gant, she just randomly is in the background, in uh, one of the panels. Um, yeah, there's there's also uh, what one of the faults I will say. Um, you can sort of tell how old or how um, 
yeah, how old Oku is by by some of his writing because there is a really stupid chapter where the characters are talking about how people online didn't like Gantz and uh and he's just talking about how how they're stupid and stuff and it's like (laughs) come on and there's a really dumb bit with um people getting killed from 2chan which is really stupid um but but other than that it's yeah oh and there's there's some weird trump stuff in there um donald trump is in is in the manga and it just feels weird and (laughs) just uh, yeah um but but other than that, it's a really interesting concept. Um, the CG isn't amazing in the anime, but it's okay. As I said, it's better mm. than the first Gantz anime. I know lots of people are going to say the brand new CGI Gantz thing is great. I think it's it's not bad. Um, I don't know if I want an entire CGI Gantz TV show. I would rather just have a video game, like a really good, solid video game. I think that's actually the best way to adapt to that story. And the live I'll action defi- isn't bad either, I'd say. I'll definitely only see bits and pieces of the live action, but it actually, but it looks really amazing. And I think you introduced me to the um, first anime adaptation of Gantz, and yeah. I was okay with that. But I stopped watching once I once you know once you told me it's not going to end like it would in the manga. Yeah, well, and I, it's annoying I, because there's yeah. so much of the manga. Uh, and yeah. The, the worst part is that the I, I'm turning this into a Gantz review, but whatever. Um, <laughs> the the main character um, has a massive amount of development uh, later on that's just not in there. Um, mm-hmm. So getting back to to Inuyashiki, the biggest thing I will say that differentiates this from Gantz that makes it a little bit better as well is the fact that the character development and where the characters go uh, and the pacing, it happens a lot quicker. He's a much better writer at the moment, uh, I would say, with his character development in this in this because uh, mm. Gantz takes a while to, to get its characters developing and, and really likable and good, while this, you know, um, within maybe the first volume, like with, with halfway through, you, you know the characters, you like them, you want to read more of them, uh, which I think is, is really good. It's definitely, yeah, it was, def- it's definitely, enjo- it was definitely enjoyable mm-hmm. when it, um, yeah, when it first came out. And I've only seen it, I only know, knew about it when I was looking at, um, those manga recommendations for, uh, anime manga reviewers on youtube mm-hmm. um because one day i was bored and decided okay let's look at something new um so looking at that i had a yeah i had a go with it and i really enjoyed it it was really it was definitely a lot of fun to have a look at and you as you've mentioned before it was really uncommon to see a old um you know an old an old uh, guy character character as the main character and having them to do all this super cool stuff. Um, not exactly something impossible, but obviously you wouldn't expect um, a guy that old as a main character to be, you know, the main character and doing all this great shit. Um, so something so some, so some, something like watching him get revived and turn into a cyborg and being able to do all this mm-hmm. um, kind of already shows great character and how, you know, despite... Especially since, especially since we'd mentioned at the start how bad his life is, mm. you know, and he gets all his power. He could have used that to just terrorize people and go, ah, I'm having a bad life, so mm. so should you. But mm. instead he turns that into a, um, what is that, into a good thing mm-hmm. and just goes out and uh, helps out people. Mm. Um, obviously not all of it looks good in terms of, you know, how he executes his um you know, um, I guess his path to justice, but mm. obviously, obviously, it was um, it already shows some great character mm. with what he does. Now, so he yeah. has Oku has done some some recent stuff. Um, re- he has done a recent manga called Gigantic, I think it's called. Um, I have read most of what's out of it. Uh, I'm just gonna say it's crap. <laughs> it's um, it's a male character it's it's just a i think it's just a fantasy i honestly think uh okahara uh, 
Okuhiroya was just really horny and just wrote something because it's just it's just really bad um it's yeah it's just a weird naked bigger woman Godzilla thing it's just not good um I wouldn't recommend it yeah it's cool to see him do new stuff but this is probably the best thing he's written apart from Gantz um just off topic could you please tell me what the name of that um series is again <laughs> okay so this has been uh alternating slovcast episode 11 catch you later